fam, hello, welcome back to Cocktail Flicks, I'm Joe. I'm Dan. Uh, we're back with another reaction for you today, fam. First we have some business to discuss. Yes, we have a new goal we'd like to announce. Please do. We'd like to set a subscription goal for the month of April. If you could help us reach 100 subscribers before April ends, that would be awesome. However, if you help us reach 200 subscribers, we will have a chance to win a prize. The prize is this. Your very own moose mug, friends. <laughs> All you have to do is this. Number one, subscribe. Number two, follow us on Twitter so that we know who you are. At the beginning of May, well, we'll just say it like this. Uh, it's, April, it's April 11th currently. We'll give you till May 11th. Sound fair to you? Sounds fair to me. Awesome. We'll have a drawing for all to see, and we'll announce the winner then. Then we'll ship it to you. As we grow, we'll have more goals and more chances to win the prizes in the future. But for now, let's accomplish this mission first and get you one of these. Also, be sure to like this video and hit the bell notification. For all of those currently subscribed, don't forget to follow us on Twitter. I'm on there all the time, so I'll, I'll make sure to interact with you guys whenever I can. Uh, you don't want to miss out on your chance of winning as well. Now back to the real business. Today, fans, we are watching 1917, directed by Sam Mendes. This is a tale that's uh, loosely based on a true story, to my knowledge, about the First uh, World War. Uh, so, it should be very interesting, Dan. Yeah, let us know in the comment section what you thought about the movie. Also, let us know what movies or genres you would like for us to react to. Anything else? No, I'm good. All right, well, then I suppose let's rock and roll. Uh, also, folks, uh, be sure to stick around to the end to catch our afterthoughts. And uh, now I guess it's movie time. You ready? Ready. Awesome. Cheers to you, sir. Oh, sorry, hold on. Slight problem. Oh, hold on. <laughs> uh, drinks. That's better. Cheers to you, fam, and cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Blake, pick a man, bring your kit. Yes, Sarge. I guess one man's as good as the other, huh? I don't see anybody else around. Did they feed us? No. Just mail. Bloody starving, aren't you? Thought we might get some decent grub out here. As much as they want me to focus on the two actors, and my eyes want to look at everything going on here. Uh -huh. There's a lot going on in the background. It really is. Something's up. Did you hear anything? No. Look at the detail. Uh -huh. Colonel McKenzie is in command of the second. He's convinced he has them on the run. He's wrong. Your orders are to get to the second. If you don't, we will lose two battalions. 1,600 men, your brother among them. Well, that's talk about the weight of the world on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Leave immediately. Take this trench west up on Sorky Hall Street, then northwest on Paradise Alley at the front. It'll be daylight, sir. They'll see us. No need to be concerned. You should meet no resistance. I don't know if I agree with that assessment. It wouldn't be much sir. of a movie without some resistance. Down to Gehenna or up to the throne. He travels the fastest who travels alone. Makes sense. Yeah, let's talk about you don't want people slowing you down. No. Blake! So they say like street signs and these things. I imagine it comes in handy if you get lost in this intricate system. Look, the last time I was told the Germans were gone, it didn't end well. If we're not clever about this, no one will get to your brother. I will. You know, I feel for him about his brother, but he needs to clear his head. He does. He needs to be a little bit more rational about that. The fuck do you think you're pushing wounded soldiers around? I'm so knocked down our sergeant! The man's fucking wounded! All right, I'm sorry, you all right? I'm sorry! Royal Commission. Send me through. Orders from the general. Send me through. Heck, they don't know that. They're just soldiers doing their thing. Uh -huh. I don't know, what would you have done if you were uh, General Aaronmore? Would you have told him that his brother could die if you don't get this information there? I probably would have picked somebody else who was a little more level headed for the job. I kind of have to wonder if they had the aerial footage, there's no, is there no way to let them know through aerial means? I mean, they, they did have air, an air force. Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Wouldn't that make more sense? If they couldn't do a supply drop or something, they put a message in there saying, hey, don't attack. Yeah. I've got to say, careful there. Stepping on the deck. That's our sergeant. I don't even know what went into making this movie, but my god, you can tell it was a lot. Mm -hmm. Settle a bet. What day is it? Friday. Friday? Well, 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 none of us was right. This idiot thought it was Tuesday. Sorry, sir. He said sorry, sir. <laughs> I don't think you have anything to apologize about. We fought and died over every inch of this fucking place. Now they suddenly give us miles. It's a trap. You're half right. 
Straight ahead to the left, past the dead horses. There's a gap directly behind them. Is that a periscope he's using? It might be. If by some fucking miracle you do make it, send up a flare. Just how desensitized he sounds to mm. everything is incredible. He's seen a lot. I'm saying at this point, they're three years into this, so yeah. Well, that's real now. Dead animals, artillery craters everywhere. Right up to the trench, too. Mm -hmm. In World War One, they were fighting over literal every inch, weren't they? Mm-hmm. It's been months fighting over the same few yards of land. Oh! Oh, that's gonna get infected for sure. Uh, I certainly hope not. I don't see how it doesn't. Look at where they are. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, Jesus. That's the hand, too. Now it's gonna get infected. Yeah. There's no dignity in this kind of death. Jesus. Uh -oh. Is that a British or a German tank? There's a gap in the wire. What made a crater that big back then? That's what I was thinking too. Are they using a drone, you think, for this shot? I imagine they are if they're going through the water like that. There's, would... a, there's a lot of obstacles laying around. It's gonna be hard to maneuver around. Shot hasn't ended yet. It was gonna take a lot of planning. Seriously, think about think about the job. Think about the job they're doing too. Fuck me! They really have gone. I was looking for the right words myself. I don't think they would have made it that far if they were still there. Your hand, all right? Put it through an effing German. Patch it up. You'll be wanking again in no time. Wrong hand. What? He said, patch it up, you'll be wanking again in no time. And then he said, wrong hand. <laughs> At a time like that, uh, I wouldn't care which hand. <laughs> well, that's pretty fresh. They're not long gone. Well, their tunnels are shelled too, but theirs looks much nicer. That's what I was thinking too. Like, they have like stone in there. Or is that wooden Nice paneling? smooth walls, yeah. Even the phone cabling is more neatly organized yes. on the wall. Which makes sense because the Germans, you know, were the more technologically advanced country at this time. Here's our way through. Bloody hell. For real. Even that rats are bigger than ours. You could eat this though. What is it? Bosch dog meat. What's wrong? Tripwire. Goes from here to the door. That was sudden. They put it right behind that food, too. He was right in the middle of it. I'm surprised he survived. He really was. He's lucky to be alive right now. Uh -huh. It's a mine shaft! But we have to jump! You're going to have to jump! Just jump! I can't! I can't see! Jump! Stop! Stop! Alright. Now we're already just kind of out in the open. I guess so. His water did not last. Nope. They have a long ways to go yet. Mm-hmm. I wish I'd shot that right now. I wish you'd pick some other bloody idiot. Why in God's name did you have to choose me? Well, I didn't know what I was picking you for. No. You didn't. You never know. That's your problem. I don't think that's fair. Right, then go back. No, I don't know. So do you want to go back? Just fire the fucking flare. Help yours, Lieutenant. I'm gonna guess now that now the British can advance towards this position, right? You should be able to. See if it, that artillery's still good, that'll have to be useful. They don't look like empty shells. The shells might be, but if they can find their own shells to use with the guns that are still there. I think those guns are gone. You think so? Yeah, I think they're destroyed. But yeah, look at them. They wanted oh, yeah, to be gone. I feel this feels like what Russia did to to Germany in World War II, kind. Of. What did, what did they call that? Scorched Earth. Yes. Yeah. Did you hear that story about Wilco? 
how he lost his ear. You know his girl's a hairdresser, right? She sends him over this hair oil. He slathers it all over his barnet. Uh -uh. Goes to sleep. In the middle of the night, he wakes up and a rat is sitting on his shoulder, licking the oil off his head. <laughs> and he she jumps wasn't up. Eating his head. And when he does, the rat bites clean through his fucking ear and oh, runs off well, with it. Yes, he was. <laughs> the rats left us alone, but they couldn't get enough of him. I swapped it with a French cap. For what? Bottle of wine. Well, what did you do that for? I was thirsty. It's a waste. If I got a medal, I'd take it back home. Why didn't you just take it home? Look, it's just a bit of bloody tin. It doesn't make you special. It doesn't make any difference to anyone. It's not just a bit of tin. It's got a ribbon on it. <laughs> that ribbon would come in handy right now for your injury to your hand. Hmm. Everybody's built differently. It's pretty interesting to hear his kind of how his character's built. Mm-hmm. He would he traded a, a medal he earned for a bottle of wine. They chopped them all down. Cherries. Well, that's unfortunate. What's the purpose of that? I guess that goes back to your scorched earth. It might be Dukes. It's a theory there, right? It's all that open space around them. It seems like an unnecessary risk. Yeah, but they have to go this direction, don't they? Yeah, but I mean, can't they just go around the farmhouse? I mean, I, I feel like at the very least you gotta conclude that there's no danger to you going around it from snipers. I don't think I might take my chance with the sniper. Oh no, the dog. Mm. There's no easy answers here. No. Did you find any food? No. Who's shooting? I do too. I can't tell who's who. I can't either. He's coming right for you. Yeah. Well, put his leg out. We should put him out of his misery. No, get him some water. He needs water. Like, why did you bother saving him? Stop. Stop. That's not a good one. No, no, no! Good question. I'll try to save him. Gut shot. Uh -huh. oh, we have to stop the bleeding. Stop! Please stop! Put me down! Put me down! Please! Put me down! I think he's done. It's not looking good. No. Am I dying? Yes, I think you are. What a shame. He's trying to help somebody and turned against him. It's too bad. Will you write to my mum for me? I will. Tell her I wasn't scared. I couldn't imagine being in a in Schofield situation here either. Uh -huh. There's just Tell nothing nothing you can say. I'll find the sec. I'll give them the message. And then I'll find your brother. Just like you. A little older. And he died. Help him. Where did these guys come from? Yeah, no kidding. There's nothing around there. Jesus. What are you doing here? I have an urgent message for the second Evans. Come with me, Corporal. It's an order. We're passing through a coast. We can take you some of the way. Yes, sir. Across no man's land. Just outside. Hey, that's Mark Strong. Mm. Yeah, from uh, uh, Kingsman. Rossi! Never in my 200 years as a soldier have I seen such a sorry excuse for a latrine <laughs> stitch. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fucking look after. Three years fighting over this. We should have just let the bastards keep it. I mean, who machine guns cows? Clever. They know if they don't shoot the cow, you will eat it. Why don't they just bloody well give up? Don't they want to go on? They hate their wives and mothers. In Germany, must be a shithole. Yeah, that guy made a good point. I'm sure so their soldiers want to go home just as much. If you do manage to get to Colonel McKenzie, make sure there are witnesses. They are direct orders, sir. I know. But some men just want the fight. That sucks that you got to give that kind of advice. Mm-hmm. Now you have to wonder if there's even any point in him 
going on this journey. Yeah. How convenient. He's in a good position too. Well, this has got something like barricaded behind. Oh my god. I think you got him. Can't even see the guy. I think I thought I saw him just kind of in the right corner. He's not firing back. Jesus. I mean, he did get him. Yeah, but not well enough. And it's nighttime too, man. He's losing time. He, yeah, he's lost a lot of valuable time. <laughs> and he knows it now. Is it Germans firing flares or is it British? Also a good question. Okay, it's German flares. Okay, good job. Good job. Better to wait until the flare goes down. So where are the Germans at? I don't know. I see the flares, but I can't see where they're coming from. I don't think they're in any one fixed position. I think they I think they're occupying these ruins. Oh, I wouldn't walk towards him. Oh hell no. How did he miss? Good question. I mean good for Schofield, but Yeah, no kidding. Somebody's been here. Somebody is still here, I think. Yeah. Oh my god, she's got a baby. I mean, this is the, these are the these are the real victims here, right? Uh huh. And the town being in the shape it is, you have to wonder what they're doing for food and supplies. What is her name? Shinisipa. Who is her mother? Shinisipa. Oh, that's just. I have food. It's horrible. Elle ne peut pas manger ça. Elle a besoin de lait. Milk. I say, didn't you find some? Yeah. yeah. Merci. Not much, but every little bit helps, right? Mm -hmm. I have to go. I'm sorry. Yeah, it sucks for them too, but he's got a mission. Oh my god. He's drunk. Drunk is the food they're eating. I suppose I could go either way. Uh -huh. Oh shit. Oh, I don't trust that at all. The last time you tried to help the drone, it didn't exactly work in your favor. Yeah. I got enough! Should have saved yourself, pal. Oh my god. You choking him out? Yeah. And he is drunk. Man, you just killed the guy. He was drunk and didn't see it coming. Seriously. Now all the Germans know you're there. Oh my god. Uh, if he runs into a dead end, it's over. goes that he has any control over. What a traumatizing mission. Oh look, it's more cherry blossoms. I guess the Germans didn't cut them all down. Oh, there's quite a few in there. They've been there for a while. Look at them. Mm -hmm. They're all bloated. Just 
Jesus. This poor guy. He just can't catch a break. Uh -uh. What is that? You hear it? Mm -hmm. I hear it. It's interesting the way they go in between scenes, how it starts out there you know, in these dirty trenches and then they're out in this nice green field. And then, and, but there's problems everywhere you go. Yeah. Oh, he's hearing singing. The way this whole movie's been shot has been something else. I don't think I can recall another movie that I've seen a, sh seen a shot like this. No, it's great scenery. It's like British guys. Yeah. Take any little break you can get. I am a poor wayfaring stranger. It's a pretty song. Glad to see my father. I'm going there. No. I have to find the Devons. Where the Devons? There's your lucky break. Yeah, you looked like 1,600 guys, though. Why haven't you gone over? We're the second wave. They don't send us all at once. Oh. That couldn't be better. Never mind, then. Yeah. Where's Colonel McKenzie? Oh, he's down at the line. Right, back into the trenches. Seriously. Where is Colonel McKenzie? Jesus Christ, man! Go and see the captain! No, I'm about to say, don't stop and talk to these guys. They're not the final decision makers. Mm -hmm. Getting ready to go, too. They really are. Sir! Sir! Captain! Stop. Yeah, this guy knows they're gonna die. Seriously. Can't lose it in front of your men like that, though. If you're getting shelled like that, I think you should. That should be a clear sign that you don't have them on the run. Where is Colonel McKenzie? He's further up the line! How far? 300 yards, he's in a cut and cover! You'll have to wait until the first wave goes over. No. So I'm sitting here telling like every person in command that hey, don't do this attack because I have orders not to, and they're still trying to do it anyways. No, 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 no. Oh my God. Well, I guess there's nowhere safe. Oh my God! What a what a sight. Jesus. Incredible. I have to see Colonel McKenzie. Do I have to stop this attack? Oh hell no! To get that far and be stopped. Mm -hmm. I just send the next wave. No! Second wave. Prepare yourself. Colonel McKenzie. This attack is not to go ahead. You have been ordered to stop. Please read the letter. I have heard it all before. Tomorrow, not read the damn the letter. Run. This is their last stand. The Germans planned this, sir. They've been planning it for months. They want you to attack. Good thing he has witnesses, like uh, like that guy said to. Mm-hmm. Is anything going in his favor right now? Yes. Stand them down. Yes, sir. Call up the orderlies. Good job, Schofield. There is only one way this war ends. Last man standing. A fuck off, Lance Corporal. Disrespectful. Well done, lad. Thank you, sir. Where Lieutenant Blake is, sir? Well, knowing Lieutenant Blake, he would have gone over with his men. He was in the first wave. How could I find him, sir? You That's try the casualty clearing station behind the line. The reward for all you went through is you saved a lot of people's lives. Live to fight another day. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's enough, though. Oh, Jesus. Sir, is Lieutenant Blake here? No idea. Lieutenant Blake! Jesus. Ugh. Oh. Come on, boys. Lieutenant Blake? Yes. Is Richard Madden? Okay. I was sent here to deliver a message. Yates? You must know my brother. I was sent here with him. Tom's here. Where is he? It was very quick. Oh, not that quick. I wouldn't want him to know that he suffered. 
No, I suppose not. What's your name? Schofield, sir. Well, you need some food. Get yourself to the mess tent. He's been put in way too many situations in the last 24 hours. I'd like to write to your mother. Tell her that Tom wasn't alone. Of course. He was a good man. Always telling funny stories. He saved my life. No, I am glad you were with him. Thank you, Will. They really just don't stay with the actors very long, do they? Just the main ones. Mm-hmm. It's really just him. Yeah. It's just his story. No matter what it was going to be, it was not. It was not going to be a happy one. Other than the fact that you that you halted a massacre. Or I guess the better word to say is prevented a massacre. Right. What a place to... What a place to end, huh? It, right mir where, it mirrors the beginning, too. Yeah. yeah. Brings it all full circle. Mm -hmm. see too many of those like that huh not especially not shot in that style not at all it was really impressive actually yeah how they just kept following him from one scene to another it definitely took a lot of pre-planning you could tell oh yeah my god so I did some uh, so I did some research Dan mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah we, we so as we know this was directed by Sam Mendes mm -hmm. uh, you saw there the, the little dedication at the end. Yeah. So Alfred Mendez it was his uh, was his grandfather, mm -hmm. and he served in the war First World War. Uh, so I guess his grandfather, but I guess the person that he could best relate to would have been Blake, because Blake was the one always telling stories. That's fair. Yeah, I can see that. So I. That would at least be where, where my mind goes. But I mean, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. That's. That's perfectly fine, but uh, I mean, what a fitting movie. Here we are in April. Watching a movie that takes place in April. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't plan that. <laughs> okay. I, that's just a, that's that's just just, a good coincidence. Right that there. really is a yeah. good coincidence. Uh, lucky, uh, lucky for us, I suppose, huh? Yeah. So yeah, probably the most immersive experience that I've at least seen. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, we've seen a lot of mm -hmm. really immersive movies. This one puts you in their shoes, man. Yeah, you're pretty much following them around like you were the third person in the group and just kind yeah. of seeing what they saw. I found, my, I found myself just constantly deeply focused on everything besides them, I think, because I wanted to see the world around them. Yeah, and that's one of the things it does really well, too, is even though it is focused on these two characters, or mostly Schofield more than anything, you do notice the details around them really, really well. For real. What can you tell us based on what you saw, just, just from a history standpoint? Well... Because I know it's you're only going off of what the story was telling us. Right. But you can also go off... I feel like you can also go off the world that was built, too. So, so the details with, like, the, the trenches and, like, the, the big wasteland between trenches that we see there in the beginning, like, all that, you know, that's very real to what happened in the war. Um... The injuries that we saw there at the end to the guys who went over there in the first wave, you could see how horrific they were. You know, that's because of all the artillery. Artillery was a very big thing. It was very destructive. Um, there was another little detail, too. And when they get to that German bunker in the, early on in the movie, they said, they mentioned they see dog food in there. And that's, that's you know, again, also, also a very realistic thing because, bear in mind, at this point, this is three years into the war. Um, both sides are suffering economically at home, mm. so supplies are becoming harder and harder to get a hold of. And that, that's the one thing that there's a nice detail with the dog food. That's a good one because I, I think I missed that one. But, but it was something that you didn't see a lot of elsewhere in the movie because I noticed like the, the, all the soldiers sound like they're very well equipped, they're ready to go to war. Which honestly, at that point, they probably should have looked a little more sloppy in the way they were they appeared. Considering what part of the war they're in, you mean? Yeah, because bear in mind. At, at this at this stage in history, it was expected that you could only support a war financially for one year. They're in year three. 
Oh, okay. So, you know, the people at home are having to deal with ration food. The army's having to deal with ration food. You don't really see how things have kind of devolved in the conflict in this movie, but there are other details in it that I think are fairly accurate. Right. I mean, it's funny you mention it's it's funny you mention that because you can kind of see who this is affecting outside of the soldiers when he meets that uh, that young girl with the baby. Mm -hmm. Because even even she, you're kind of wondering what are they doing for food and the baby. There's only one thing that the baby can eat, and, and it's, it's milk. milk. So. That was, very, that was a very good tie-in there. That was a very touching scene, although it does raise a lot of questions about what's going on in the movie. Like, you know, why is it that you have milk that's been, you know, just recently extracted from the cow, but you don't see anybody around doing the work? You're saying from a continuity standpoint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Like, some, some of it just seems a little bit too convenient plot-wise. But, you know, it's, it's a nice story touch, I guess. No, I understand. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, I think I think I agree with you on that one. For all we know, somebody was there recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, that area that they that they were in, it's it's possible. And you correct me if I'm wrong. It's possible that you know that little bit of area there was probably trading hands, or the Germans had gone through there so recently that whoever's there, they might have killed them on the way out. Maybe so. Maybe we just never saw the the bodies of the farmers. Because well, you saw they chopped those cherry trees down. Yeah. As they were leaving. Yeah. So, you know. They score, you know, like they're they're doing as we said before that scorched earth uh, tactic all the way out mm -hmm. and leaving leaving nothing in its in, in uh, for anybody else to, to follow there. But it's that was an interesting uh, detail that you mentioned though, especially with the dog food. I didn't catch that one. Mm -hmm. I didn't catch that one one detail. I did catch though. You notice how they. You saw the different signs in the trenches at the very at the very beginning in the British trenches. Yeah, they had signs as well in the German trenches. Yeah, I mean I couldn't read them because they were German, but it was probably the similar thing. You know, hey, watch what you're doing out there. And, yeah, yeah. Be wary of snipers, things like that. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, hell, folks, in the comments, let us know if you know what the what those what those said. That'd be nice. That'd be nice information to know. I think I'd like to see what what they were telling their people as well. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean. Go, go back to those uh, power lines we saw. You saw them, if you, you, you compare them and contrast them from British to like the uh, the Germans, one, German ones there, the Germans definitely looked a lot more organized. The trenches in general just looked better. Yeah. They were, they looked like they were actually constructed rather than dug out. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one thing I noticed about them. Mm -hmm. So. I wonder why the British ones looked like that though. Would that, does that have anything to do just like who was there first or something or? Um, possibly. Like I said, the, the Germans technologically were the country at this time. Um, you know, they would have been able to put more resources towards that. They were, you know, with, because of their connection to Austria-Hungary, they had, a, you know, a big resource pool to, to get stuff from compared to the British who were pretty much having to live off of the French mainland because they, of course, come from an island. Um... Were they allied? Were there were there allies at this time, or was everybody kind of? Because I felt like the uh, British and and the French were kind of allied together on this one. Well, but, the, the funny thing is, the British and French weren't really allied. Allied. It was more of an alliance of convenience. The the British actually got involved because the Germans invaded Belgium, not because of anything to do with France. That's interesting. Yeah. And yet, all that fighting was taking place in France. Well, northern France, where near where Belgium is. So. Right. Okay, I suppose that makes perfect sense. So, one more thing that I wanted to note: uh, right there at the beginning, with uh, Colin Firth as a uh, General Aaron Moore, mm -hmm. I believe. He uh, he had a he. You heard his quote there, right? Mm -hmm. Did you happen to notice who he said that directly to? I thought he said Lieutenant. I assumed he was talking to Blake. I no, he was talking directly to Schofield, mm. which is, in my opinion, fitting, because Schofield would have to finish that mission alone. So it's kind of a. I wonder if that can be considered some foreshadowing. That he was telling that directly to him, and then it kind of maybe kind of like a, just ended with like blanketing that to everybody. Yeah, but then at the same time, the, the, as long as Blake was alive, they did kind of have to depend on each other to get things done. Is at the beginning there it almost looked like Schofield was gonna die in that in that German bunker after that explosion went off. So 
it was kind of they worked well together there for the time that they were together. Pretty much an angel on his shoulder until he couldn't be anymore. Yeah. So, excellent. Your overall thoughts, though? A terrific movie. I mean, like I said, you know, historically, I think it's probably eh, one or two things here and there, but overall, I thought it was a good movie. Yeah, I mean, it's my... a good personal journey. Yeah, my even even though my favorite part was still the world they built, mm -hmm. I was beyond impressed with the amount of detail that went into it. Oh yeah. So I, I'd highly recommend recommend this movie to anybody, and uh, we'll leave a. I'll let you know in the description, folks, where you can uh, where you can locate this movie and find it. But it's so brand new. This was made. Uh, this was this came out in 2019. You, you're going to have zero problems finding this, and I think currently it's available on Showtime, guys. So uh, uh, by all means, take a take a free take a free one on them. Take a free seven days, whatever they're offering. <laughs> Go or up. buy the DVD. Or buy the DVD like I did. Yeah. See, folks, ah, you hadn't seen it earlier, but there it is. Yeah. <laughs> we did have the DVD. So uh, yep, we're sticking with the we're sticking with the collection still, guys. But um, did go out and buy this so that we could watch it. Okay, I'll I'll be fair. It's worth having though. Yes, yes. I had heard so many good things about it. There's no reason. There's no reason for me not to have that one. So, mm -hmm. but I know we've asked you to let us know a bunch of things in the comments there, guys. But again, uh, on top of this, if there's anything you want us to watch, movie wise or genre wise, Daniel said it earlier. Leave a leave a note in the comment section. Let us know. And um, so we're wide open to suggestions, guys. We like all kinds of stuff. Absolutely, you know that over there that you could one could point out that uh, I'm the kind of person that just collects based on his feelings at the time. So that could yeah. very well be the case. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for watching with us, guys. Uh, this was a fun one. Uh, I have finished my drink entirely, so I guess it's time to go drink one off camera there and enjoy the. Enjoy the rest of my time there. But join us again next time for another uh, reaction to another movie. We're about to start getting themed here, guys, and you're not going to want to miss that. Yeah, we'll give you more details about that coming up here in the next few weeks or so. Absolutely. And, yeah. don't, and don't forget the challenge we set for you, guys. 100 subscribers, but if you want to earn yourself one of these, we need 200, and uh, you will have a chance to win yours, okay? But it won't be the last time, but let's complete this one first, okay? And don't forget to join us out there on Twitter. You know, like I said, we're out there all the time. We'll, we'll interact with you guys if you give us a chance to. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, guys. Uh, we'll see you next time there. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. <laughs>